Have you ever heard the story of General David Ireland and the brave 137th New York Infantry? David Ireland was born in 1833 in Fort Ferris, Scotland, and by 18 he had taken up a tailor's trade. His family immigrated to New York, where he apprenticed under his father. When the Civil War broke out, Ireland originally enlisted as a lieutenant in the 79th New York. Eventually, after several recruiting assignments, he was promoted to colonel and given command of the 137th New York Infantry. When the 137th New York Infantry marched up to Gettysburg, it was positioned on the extreme right of the Union Army on July 2nd. Somewhat confusingly, the 137th and the rest of General Greene's brigade formed perpendicular to the main Union line at Cobbs Hill. That evening around 7 p.m., Ireland's skirmishers were driven back into this line, and the 137th commenced its first prolonged firefight. The New Yorkers stood firm in their baptism of fire. The musketry was steady for 30 minutes, when through the terrific fire and smoke, David Ireland looked to his right and saw Confederates moving around his flank as the sun was beginning to set on the battlefield. It is at this point that Colonel Ireland, during the roar of battle, ordered his rightmost company to form at a right angle to the rest of the regiment. Ireland was being outflanked by Confederates. The 137th had an entire brigade of Confederates sweeping around their position. A regiment from Pennsylvania arrived in time to help the beleaguered New Yorkers, and Ireland placed them to the right. The Pennsylvanians were into position and immediately came under heavy Confederate fire from the front and right. With help retreating as fast as it appeared, Ireland found himself almost surrounded. He wrote that we are being fired on heavily from three sides, from the front of the works, from the right, and from a stone wall in our rear. Here we lost severely and killed and wounded. In their first true firefight, the men from New York fended off attacks from the front and right, and now, due to the collapse of their reinforcements, their rear. Seeing no other option, Colonel Ireland ordered Captain Joseph Gregg and a small squad to charge the Confederates to give the others time to fall back. Ireland lamented that Captain Gregg fell mortally wounded, leading and cheering on his men. Many of the men who went forward suffered the same fate. After the charge of Captain Gregg's men, the 137th fought on for a while longer, checking the Confederate advances until they were relieved by Union reinforcements. David Ireland and the 137th New York held the Union right. Brigadier General George Green, commander of the 3rd Brigade, 2nd Division, 12th Corps, stated in his after-action report that the officers and the men of the 137th behaved admirably during the whole of the contest. Colonel Ireland was attacked on his flank and rear. He changed his position and maintained his ground with skill and gallantry, his regiment suffering very severely. Where all so well did their duty, it is difficult to specially commend in any individual, but all have my heartly commendations for their gallant conduct and for their good service rendered their country. It's your history. Learn it. Know it. Love it.